Question number four says a uniform 33.5 kilogram beam of length 4.95 meters is supported by a vertical rope located 1.2 meters from the left end as in the figure below. The right end of the beam is supported by a vertical column. A. Find the tension in the rope and B. Find the force that the column exerts on the right end of the beam. And so as it's given in the problem, we have a beam right here. And that beam weighs 33.5 kilograms. And from the, from the far left end of the beam and to where it is attached to a rope, there is a distance of 1.2 meters. And then also from the very left end of the, of the beam, all the way to where it rests on a vertical column, there is a distance of 4.95 meters. Since this beam is not moving, we can, use, uh, we can use two equations and we can solve for everything that's going on here. So those equations would be the sum of the forces equals zero and the sum of the torques equals zero. So what we need to do is label the forces on this bar, and so we can do that very easily. So at halfway, we're, we're assuming that this bar is uniform, so, so just assuming that this bar is uniform, at the halfway point, there would be, that would be the center of gravity, and so all of the, all of the weight of the bar would exert itself at the halfway point. So this would be, this would be 33.5, 33.5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared for gravity. But just for symbolic purposes, we can call this the force of center mass. And that force uh, exerts itself, so the force of, the force of center mass, it, it exerts itself at, at one half of L. So L, we said, was 4.95 meters. This exerts itself at, and I, I don't know why I put a four there, this exerts itself at one half of L. Now there's also a force pulling upward. That, that is the force of, of tension. We'll, we'll put it with a capital T. And we'll distinguish that from our torque, which we'll, we'll label it as tau. The torque will be as tau. And our last force is an upward force exerted on the column. So we'll call this the force of the, force of the wall. And so just to recap, we have a downward force from the mass exerting on, uh, exerted by gravity. We have a tension force exerted by the rope. And we have a, a normal force exerted by the wall. And so we could write an equation for the sum of the forces. So F, uh, let's say F of uh, center mass, force of center mass, plus the force of the wall, plus the tension, is equal to zero. And now we have to add up all of our torques. And the thing about a tor the torques are, it, we want to start, we, we, we have to pick a point of origin. So we could either pick where the, the, uh, it's being held up by the rope, or we could pick the wall. Whenever we pick a point of origin, the, the classical way of dealing with this is that we cannot change our point of origin in the middle. It does make working the problem easier, I think, but your professor will not like it. And so we have to pick one and we have to stick with it for the rest of the problem. And I propose we pick this one because it, it makes it simple because there's nothing over on this side uh, doing anything funky. So we don't have to uh, do any weird math. And essentially it takes away the wall as, as one of our force components so we can we can solve for the, for the torque on the rope, and that will allow us to substitute in for the force on the rope, and therefore we can solve for the sum of the forces. And so from our point of origin, we have two torques. So we have the, the um, distance from, the, from, the, from our point of origin. We'll just label it O for origin. We have this mass times gravity pulling downwards. So the force of center mass times times one half of L. So we said that the, the distance all the way across here was L 
and we said that L is 4.95. We're not interested in, in the exact number at this point. We're just saying it's one half of L. And then we also have a torque, a, a torque pulling upward that's equal to the tension times L minus D. And I'll go, I'll, I'll try to explain. If you remember, we had, we had a, a distance right here of D. It told us what D was. And then we had, of course, the distance of the whole thing, which is L. So if we take the distance of L, subtract off D, we're right here. So we can put that in parentheses. And when we sum up the torques, we, we know it's the sum of the torques and the sum of the forces. Both of them are supposed to equal zero. So we could sum up the torques, and we would say that uh, the force of center mass uh, times, times one-half of L plus the, the force of tension times, times the L minus D equals zero. And now I can use my equation for the sum of the torques, and I can solve for the force of the tension. And so I'm just going to move all of this up a little ways, and I'm going to rewrite my equation. So the force of center mass uh, times one-half L plus the force of the tension times L minus D equals zero. So I can subtract my, I can subtract my force of center mass uh, times one-half L. I can subtract it over to the other side of the equation. So I would get the force of the tension times L minus D is equal to negative force of center mass one-half L. And then I could divide by, I could divide both sides by L minus D, and I would get that the, the tension is equal to the for, negative force of center mass one-half L divided by L minus D. L minus D. And so I just moved everything up so that we can uh, we can go ahead and plug in some values for these right here. So the force of center mass we said is the is the mass of the bar times gravity. And so the mass it said was 33.5 and so um, and so the uh, the mass times the gravity is going to equal three uh, we're gonna say because it's minus, it's negative force of center mass, so it's negative 328.3 times one half, and we said L is 4.95, and then we're gonna divide this by L minus D, so 4.95 minus 1.2. Now, I, w I just wanna stop and explain something really quick. Um, you're free to choose any coordinate system you want when you're solving these things. Typically, it's easier if you say that down is negative and up is positive. And I, I didn't define this when I started uh, with this video, but if you would like to simplify that for yourselves, you could say that the force, the force of center mass is equal to, to negative uh, 33.5 times 9.8. So times... so. Because it's it's a force that's pulling down, it's actually the only force in the downward direction. And so if you do that, the negative of the force of center mass would actually be a positive number. And, and that would simplify it. Whenever we solve for the torque, it would give torque a positive number, which would mean upward. Um, however, you don't have to. You can say that the positive direction is downward. You're free to choose whatever coordinate system, but you have to stay consistent throughout the whole thing or else you won't know what direction things are going whenever you solve for them. And so when you plug all of these numbers into your calculator, you get that the, the force of the torque is 216.678 newtons. And so this is actually the answer to part A. And with that answer, it's very, very simple to go back to sum of forces must equal zero and plug that in to solve for part B. And so that's what we'll do. We'll say that the sum of the forces, which the forces were the, uh, the force of tension plus the force of center mass plus the force from the wall has to equal zero. Well, we know what the force of the tension, the force of center mass are. And so if we subtract those over, so we would get that the force from the wall is equal to negative force of tension minus the force of center mass. And so 
we know that the, the force of center mass is downward, so it's a negative number. And so we would say, well, and the, the, the tension on the rope is upward, so it's a positive. And so the, the, we just plug in our numbers, and so we would get negative um, 216.678 newtons minus negative 328.3. So this ends up being a plus 328.3. We rearranged this so that the force of the wall is equal to 328.3 minus 216.678 and that equals 111.622 and that's newtons. And that is the answer for part B. Now with all that said, there is an easier way to do this. Um, and maybe it's not easier, maybe it, to me it's easier because I actually, um, I think I invented this way, I may not have. But I did sit and study a picture, look at the question, and I came up with this. And then after I re read the textbook, I realized that my answer will not probably fly with my professor. And so if you would like to know how to do it my way, which I think is an easier way, then I will provide uh, a link down in the, uh, down in the uh, description of this video below if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're watching this on my blog, then I will provide you uh, that link should be directly below this video.